Okay. Uh, thanks very much for, for having me on to talk about this. Um, so as mentioned, I'll be speaking about data management um, at the Integrated Marine Observing System, and, it, and it's all about strengthening the foundations that underpin IMOS. Uh, so I do want to say up front that I'm not a data scientist. I'm a biological oceanographer. Uh, my areas of expertise are around food web dynamics. Uh, and so I try to understand how the first few steps in the food web are changing and what's causing them to change and what that means for uh, the rest of the ecosystem in terms of productivity. Uh, so my role as IMOS Senior Science Officer is to oversee the science for the system um, and make sure that what we're doing is, is best practice. And that's uh, part of what I'm going to speak about today. Um, so given that I'm not a data scientist, if we start to get into the delving a bit deeper into the nitty gritty of what's going on with this sort of stuff, I'll defer to my colleague uh, on the line here, uh, Natalia Atkins from AODN, who many of you will already know, and who's uh, a bit more qualified to speak about the, the nitty gritty on these sorts of things. Uh, I'm going to give you a bit of a high level overview, I guess, about what IMOS is about and why it's important for us to make sure that we're doing the right thing in terms of data management. Um, oops, let's see. Okay, so just a quick outline. I'll give you a bit of an introduction to IMOS, what it what it is and how it works. Talk about the foundations that underpin IMOS and, and the pillars that support our sustained observations. Uh, and then get into data management at IMOS and, and how we ensure our foundations are strong through our data management. And then a, a quickly touch on some collaborations we've got with ARDC. So straight into it, why was IMOS established? Well, it's really about the fact that oceans really matter to Australia as a blue economy. It's a really huge part of our culture. It's important for national safety and sovereignty and security, energy and food security, conservation of our unique biodiversity, really important to our coastal populations and around climate change and extremes and resource <laughs> allocation as well. So historically, our observing was really uncoordinated very poor coverage and not really sustained. So IMOS was established uh, in 06, 07 to address these problems and see if we couldn't do things a bit better to make sure that we were able to manage, uh, adequately, sustainably manage our marine resources. So IMOS is an integral part of GOOSE, the Global Ocean Observing System. We're formally recognized as one of the 13 regional alliances and we're one of the three key regional alliances of GOOSE, I guess, along with IUSE, uh, the US Integrated Observing System, uh, Ocean Observing System, and uh, European GOOSE. And we are regarded as a leader in best practice of marine science observations and data management. So what we're doing uh, around Australia is uh, also contributing important information to managing global resources. So IMOS is a national collaborative research infrastructure we're funded through the, uh, by the Australian government through the National Collaborative Research Infrastructure Strategy. Uh, we're collaborative in that we're, we're run as an unincorporated joint venture um, between all of the principal participants that you can see in the bottom left here, uh, but we're run with the University of Tasmania as the lead agent. And we're all about research infrastructure. We're about putting instruments in the water to collect the observations that are needed for sustained observing of the marine environment. And also critical to what we do is the fact that all of the data collected using uh, um, IMOS funded platforms must be made publicly available. It must be open access. So how does IMOS work? Well, we work, we're guided by community driven science and implementation plans that are organized through nodes. We have an open ocean node or blue water and climate node that you can see down the bottom there. Uh, and five regional nodes covering Australia's shelf and coastal oceans. There's also two jurisdictions that you can see. Northern Territory uh, is generally covered through the Queensland or Western Australian nodes and linkages there. Uh, and we have a Tasmanian jurisdiction, but that's uh, in the process of becoming a node in its own right. So planning uh, these plans developed by the nodes set out the socioeconomic context for what we do around Australia and identify the big science questions that determine what we need to observe and where and when and how we do it. So it's really important to, uh, to note here as well that we're a national system. 
Uh, we're not a series of separate systems run by these separate jurisdictions or run by the nodes. What we do, uh, or what the nodes do, and that the node science and implementation plans need to take into account IMOS's long-term strategies, make sure they're aligning with IMOS's long-term strategies and national strategies, but also considering the connectivity with, their, with the other nodes that, are, that they're linked to, um, to ensure that everything we're doing is um, fitting together and working well together um, so that we are truly a national system. Uh, and the way that, a way that we achieve that is that we don't fund the nodes, we fund facilities. Uh, and it's the node science and implementation plans that determine how the nodes interact with the facilities to ensure that we're getting the observations that we need um, for their stakeholders, but also for, for the national plans that we have. So, as I said, IMOS funds facilities. We fund things from uh, shelf moorings and deep water moorings. Um, we're looking at everything from marine microbes up to uh, large top predators through animal tracking. Uh, we work with Argo floats and ocean gliders, autonomous underwater vehicles, radar, ships of opportunity, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, and we also, it's all run, all the data uh, is then managed through the Australian Ocean Data Network. And that's really important to what we do, critical to what we do in terms of our data management and making sure that everything's open access. Uh, these facilities, as I mentioned, um, in talking about the nodes, are integrated across scales from the coastal regions across the shelf to the open ocean and disciplines. Uh, we look at physics, we look at biogeochemistry, and we look at um, uh, top, top predators and sort of overall ecosystem information as well. So if we look at IMOS's national footprint, uh, you can see I've just kind of pulled out a few different observations that we collect here. Uh, around the country. I think what I've got here is demonstrating uh, data from Argo floats, from ships of opportunity. Uh, there's information here from moorings about some benthic observations that we take, um, as well as biogeochemistry. So the observations that we collect are critically important for the sustainable management of Australia's marine resources. Um, we're also involved in a lot of global observation programs that you can see here. Um, I won't go through all of them now, but our facilities are providing information that's critical to the running of these programs as well and promoting the sustainable management of marine resources, not just what's happening around Australia. And as I've mentioned already, all this data is discoverable, openly accessible, usable and reusable through the Australian Ocean Data Network. And this is um, a critical part of the way we run things. If um, if it's not going to be made publicly available, then it shouldn't be collected using IMOS funds. So now I want to talk a bit about the foundations that underpin these sustained observations. So I've told you about the system um, that we've got running, um, and but what about the foundations that underpin this and allow us to continue to do what we're doing? This is uh, sort of things around making sure that we're using best practice protocols uh, for sampling and analysis, as well as data processing and QAQC. Um, we're also relying on our data management processes um, to underpin these observations, as well as our peer reviewed science and implement implementation planning run through the nodes and our long term strategic planning. Um, and all this is about we, we need to make these pillars that underpin our observations as strong as we possibly can to make it impossible to knock IMOS over, so to speak. Um, and this is not about making sure that we continue to be employed, although that is a good thing. Uh, it's all about making sure that we can continue to provide the uh, observations that are needed to uh, sustainably manage marine resources and deliver what's needed by our key stakeholders to ensure that they can keep doing what they need to be doing moving forward. Uh, and so now what I wanna focus on is these two pillars around uh, data management and uh, what sort of processes we've got in place. And I wanna go into this in a little bit more detail to tell you how uh, it's part of my role as the, as the science officer, I guess, is to make sure that these pillars are as strong as they can be. So first up, 
all of IMOS procedures and protocols are registered with the Ocean Best Practices system. And when I say all, this is our aim. At the moment, we're working towards this. Uh, not all of them are there, um, but part of my role in coming on board is to start chasing these up and make sure that this is what we can do. Um, this is about our sampling and analysis protocols, our calibration procedures, as well as data processing management and QA and QC procedures. And the reason we're doing this is so that uh, in future, should questions be raised about the efficacy of what we're doing in IMOS, we can hand on heart point to the fact that uh, what we are doing, everything that we are doing is being done according to best practices um, uh, using international standards. So as part of this, all the documents must be registered with um, Ocean's Best Practices system through IMOS. This ensures that the, the DOIs are listed through our storage repositories, which helps to maximise the impact derived from IMOS funding. So again, this is all about ensuring that all of our operations are, conducting, are conducted according to standards, international standards, following best practices, and it helps to create additional impact through our protocols and practices. So not only the data that we're collecting, but the protocols and practices that we have in place are being used um, to generate impact uh, elsewhere in uh, the marine observing system. Next up, we'll talk about data management. So in the first instance, IMOS AODNs developed a standardized MATLAB toolbox for data processing. So how, what happens then is that uh, every, anybody around the country from, uh, it doesn't matter which node or wherever the, the uh, observations are collected, they'll run their data uh, through the MATLAB toolbox, which will process and export it. Uh, this is data from moorings and CTD profiles in the required format, ready to be ingested straight into the AIDN pipeline infrastructure. And then as part of this infrastructure, part of this pipeline, there's a net CDF checker, which is the US IUS version, to make sure that these data adhere to climate and forecast conventions. So we're trying to make sure that uh, it's as easy as possible to get the data into the format that's needed uh, to be pulled straight into the AODN um, and that it's conforming to required conventions. Uh, the next way that we're uh, really helping with our data management is um, that in terms of vocabulary. So IMOS AODN is an important part partner in developing the voc vocabularies in Research Vocabularies Australia with ARDC. So IMOS submits and reuses content from the uh, BODC National Environmental Research Council vocabulary server. This is all about making sure that if we are wanting to develop a new vocabulary, there's not one that's already in existence. Uh, just making sure that we're not doubling up and ensuring that um, we've got the best ones that we can, we can use. Um, and that makes it easy then for others who want to use these sorts of vocabularies in there um, uh, in it, when they're developing their databases, et cetera, uh, to know that uh, a place to look is the AODN to ensure that they're getting the right one. Uh, in, further in terms of management, uh, we're working towards Core Trust certification. So the AODN is an active member of the ARDC Trusted Data Repositories Community of Practice. And together with other repositories working towards submissions for Core Trust SEAL certification. Um, this requires addressing these 16 requirements intended to reflect the characteristics of trustworthy repositories. So it's important for us to be able to do this to make sure that people know that if they're looking at data from the AODN, they know they're looking at data from a repository that can be trusted and that's going to be sustainable for the long term. Uh, and just a quick mention for the ways that we track data usage for IMOS. Um, it's tracked using Sumo Logic, checking AODN logs and Google Analytics to assess um, visits to the AODN portal. Um, and finally, I just wanna to touch on a couple of projects uh, that we've got in collaboration with ARDC. There's one called the Microbial Ocean Atlas, which is about coupling genomic and oceanographic data to enhance integration. And another one called EcoAssets, where we're looking at integrating uh, ecosystem data to support national environmental report reporting. And this is all about adding value to IMOS data to find new ways or ways that we can increase the use and uptake and impact. And that's what's really important about what we're doing. 
Uh, we need to make sure that the observations we're collecting are having impact um, to justify the response uh, to justify the funding that we're getting from uh, our federal government. Uh, and with that, I'll leave it there and uh, take some questions. I see there's some going off in the chat here, so I'll start to have a look at what's going on there. <laughs>